This semester in MISY 330, the database class, I'm going to be running a series of videos to help you with the material. Hopefully it will help you learn the material better as well as prepare for the quizzes. To help structure the presentations, I'm going to use a, a framework called ROPES. ROPES is a mnemonic that stands for Review, Overview, Present, Exercise, and Summary. So if we were actually in the middle of a semester uh, or in the middle of a presentation, I would be reviewing the previous material. Since this is the first uh, slide of the semester, the presentation of the semester, let's just move on to the next section, which is the overview. So an overview of the material we're going to cover today is what is the relational model? Um, how does the relational model structure data? How does the relational model improve data integrity? And uh, how does the relational model allow users to ask questions of their data? And finally, what are the disadvantages of the relational model? So the first question we want to explore in our presentation today is, what is the relational model? Well, the relational model was created by a gentleman named E.F. Codd, and it was developed really in the late 60s, early 70s. And uh, E.F. Codd's goal was to improve data integrity. The, the databases that were used back then, hierarchical network databases, were not as strong in data integrity, and he wanted to find a way to store data one and only one time, and that is not have any duplication of data across different tables. And this was a pretty ambitious task, but he was able to actually do it. His background was in set theory, um, relational calculus. He developed relational calculus, which I had to cover in the doctoral program. Believe me, you don't want to have to do that. But, um, but the important thing to remember with this is that data in a relational database are stored one and only one time. So the second question is, how, how does the relational model structure data? Well, you might be surprised that it actually is not that much different than a regular spreadsheet. Uh, this is an example of a spreadsheet up here. Um, we have professors here that are in the uh, Learner College, the College of Business. And you'll see that uh, this is actually a spreadsheet. This is not a, a database, but this is a spreadsheet. So it looks very much like a uh, relational database, but because it's stored in a table. And that's how relational databases store their information. But the big difference here is that relational databases like to break information down into one particular topic, and we call that topic an entity. So, for example, information that's related to faculty is going to be stored in the faculty entity. Information that's specific to department is going to be stored in the department entity. And information that is specific to the building, of course, is going to be stored in the building entity. And in this way, actually, we enhance data integrity by keeping uh, this information specific to the entity. Now, this conceptual model is call, called an entity relationship model. We're going to be spending a lot of time on that. But this, this structure actually translates directly to the structure of a database. So if we go over to Access, you'll see that the three entities that I talked about, that is building, department, are very similar. And that is department has information about department, building has information about building, and then faculty has information about faculty. So again, it looks a lot like a spreadsheet, but it stores the information that's specific to that uh, type of entity. The other important part of uh, relational modeling is the relationships that go between the entities. So the relationships are typically verbs, and we say, for example, that a faculty belongs to a department. And in that way, we can actually de depict the relationship between faculty and department. So faculty belongs to a department. We can go the other direction by saying that, if, and reading it this way, and that is saying that a department contains faculty. Now, the strange little symbols here are very important. We call this symbol right here a crow's foot. And the reason it's called a crow's foot is that, well, it looks like a crow's foot. And you'll notice that right in front of it, there's a little zero here, right? there. And so what, the way we read this, if we go right to left, is a department contains zero too many faculty. And so that way we can actually notate this in terms of its relationship. And those are called business rules. So if we say that a department can contain zero too many faculty, if we go this way, we say that a faculty member can be a part of one and only one department. Now, we're going to be spending a lot of time on this throughout the semester, but I do want you to become familiar with this for the first class. With building, we can say that a faculty member resides in one and only one building. 
But when we go the other direction, you'll notice that similar to going, so if we go this way, we say that a building can contain zero to many faculty members. And so again, these are called business rules. They're extremely important and you're going to get comfortable with them because they really define how a business works and the rules that it has to live by with regards to its data. Now the next question that we're, we wanted to talk about, we, we've talked about data integrity, we, we talked about um, the, the relational model, these two questions, but now we want to actually address this question. How, do, how does the relational model allow users to ask, ask questions of their data? And this is extremely important because you know, data are pretty much useless if we can't actually ask it questions. So by asking questions of the data, we use a language called Structured Query Language, or SQL. And we're going to be spending the whole second half of the semester discussing SQL. It's an extremely important language. You'll be happy to know that SQL is one of the most valued languages by companies. And so learning it is going to be really something great to put on your resume. All large organizations use SQL uh, in some way because it is the language that you use to access data in a database. Now, even though this looks pretty ugly, it actually is not that bad once you get used to it. The select statement lists the columns that you want, that is the, the, the information that you want listed in the output. After the from, you just list what table you want it from, uh, and then how that information is going to be joined together, and then finally how you're going to sort that information. Now there's a lot to SQL. I'm certainly not trying to cover it all today, um, but I want to get you some exposure to it. This will be covered in the second half of the semester, and so it's good to just, just become a little familiar with it. Finally, we want to talk about um, the disadvantages of the relational model. Um, historically, the, the relational model was considered to be higher in terms of overhead, that it tended to be slower than other relational structures. That's largely gone away, to be honest with you, because with the advent of very fast computers and, and high amounts of memory, uh, SQL is comparable now to the other data sets that are, or data models that are out there. And I can, it's easily said that SQL and the relational model in general are the primary, and I'm talking about a fairly large market share now, in terms of how to access data. You, you almost never even see any other models these days. So even though that used to be a problem, it isn't as much of a problem anymore. Now, with regards to comparing it to spreadsheets, the relational model is more complicated. It's harder to understand. Uh, it takes more time. You know, to really create some kind of a large database, you do need an expert to do it. But for the purposes of what we're doing and to be able to access data in a large organization, the relational model is not that difficult. It just takes a little practice like anything else, and you will be able to do that before the end of the semester. So as the exercise for I'd like to leave you with for our first video is... Uh, the Rolling Stones' top 10 albums of all time. These, of course, are the top rock and roll albums of all time. And here's all the information. Uh, we're, the ranking here is in the first column. The, either the group or the last name of the artist is in the next column, the artist's first name, title of the album, the company, uh, the record company that released the album, and the year it was released. Uh, one of the things that's amazing, if you look at this, by the way, is how tight uh, in the top 10 uh, seven out of the ten albums were released in between 1965 and 1968, so that was an amazing year for rock and roll music. So what I would like you to do is very simple. What are the entities? And what also, what are the relationships between the entities? Now we'll be talking about this in class, but I'd also like you to think about it and I think it would be a good preparation for the first quiz that we're going to be having. So that's our first video. Uh, we've covered a lot of ground in the first video. We, we talked about the ropes model, which is going to be something we'll be seeing for the rest of the semester. I provided some background on what the relational model is. We've still got a lot to do, but hopefully you have a better idea of what it's all about. We talked about um, the, uh, how, the, how data in the relational model are structured, and you saw that they're in the form of tables, very similar to a spreadsheet, but maybe better defined. Uh, we talked about data integrity through business rules and relationships. Uh, we talked, Then we talked about SQL, that is, how do we ask questions of our data using the uh, structured query language. We talked a little bit about advantages and disadvantages about the SQL model, especially the disadvantages, um, and then I provided you an exercise, and that is to structure the data for the top 100 rock and roll albums, I'm sorry, top 10 rock and roll albums of all time. So thanks for listening. I'm looking forward to seeing you all in class. If you have any questions, please let me know. Take care.